Welcome to Monza Temple of Speed. Buongiorno and welcome to Monza. The Michelin Le Mans Cup is back in Italy for the fourth round of the season. And what a race it's going to be here at the Temple of Speed. Check it out. Oh, it's a Temple of Speed because I think uh, it's one of the only racetracks in the park. And uh, it's amazing here to, to be driving through the green and uh, sitting in the park and be on a, on a really fast race. High speed and big brakes. The feeling is uh, amazing. Yeah, I mean, it's always a pleasure. It's a really, really nice place. Uh, the track is super fun to drive, and yeah, it's a, it's a special place. And I think everybody, everybody loves to race here. I really like Ascari. Uh, you know, you, you enter with a lot of speed, and then you have to brake hard and get the flow flow right. Uh, I think that's the best place for me on, on the track. After two races in Le Mans on the mighty and lengthy Circuit de la Sarthe, we're here at the Temple of Speed, a circuit that never disappoints. Now let's take a look at the current rankings in LMP3. The number 10 racing spirit of Le Mans dominates the category. In GT3, GMB Motorsport is in the lead. Now, before we talk about the race, let's talk a bit of cuisine. I mean, when in Italy, David Aldani, the Michelin starred chef, gave a cookery lesson to none other than Freddie Hunt, who in turn, very kindly, showed him his LMP3. When two talents meet, it gives that. Hi. Hi. Freddie. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Davide, nice to meet you. Very Somebody good. told me that you are interested about the food, you love food. Uh, yes, so yeah, I, I do love, I love eating. Are you, yeah. you cook or? I cook, yeah. I, I raise my own meat at home, and my, my own vegetables and. Yeah, so we're gonna do something together today. Yeah. You're yeah. gonna cook with me. Yeah, let's do it. So now we go back to the kitchen. Okay. I used to call my kitchen the balance of the contrast. When I put something soft, I put, some, I put something crunchy. When I put something sweet, I had something salted, so it just makes it all. So you want to test my uh, the presentation skills? Presentation. Okay, let's try it. My food with this idea, the presentation of uh, Freddy. Perfect. Now you, now you want to try it. All right, delicious. It's fine, no? Perfect salt flip, salt and out. Creamy and crunchy and, creamy. and salted and sugar. Yeah. That's really good. Can I eat the rest of that? Yeah, yeah. this is making me very happy. <laughs> my, my idea of food is very simple. Three, four things maximum. And this is real Italian style. You know this? Poached egg? No. Looks like it. The name is burrata. Burrata. Burrata, okay? This is lemon from Naples. And this is mint. If you close your eyes and you eat it, you're gonna have all the flavor of Italy. You have lemon, mint, tomato, I love, I love mint. Mm. But if you want to do something a little bit dirty, you hang up and you eat with your finger. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Go ahead. This is the backstage of the kitchen. <laughs> like this, like the Japanese. Very good. So, sometimes you don't need to use the cutlery for the kitchen, you know? <laughs> it's enough the finger that you have. So, thanks for coming. Um, you show me your kitchen, let me show you the garage now. I'm very curious. So this is a Ligier, a French car. Ligier LMP3. LMP stands for Le Mans prototype. Ligier was in Formula One many years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think when your father was... Uh... Yes. You want to sit in it? Yeah, I would like. If it's possible, I don't know. My leg is too long, so you drive like that. Paddle shift up and down. It turns out you're going out on track, so <laughs> your turn to give it a try. Okay, good. Yeah. 
German driver Felipe Laza was driving for Proton Competition in ELMS last year. This year, he's changed a car. He's driving an LMP3 for Fricadelli Team Racing. We caught up with him to find out his objectives here in Monza. Really a challenging uh, series, for sure. Very competitive. It's my first season in a, in a proper prototype series, so still some some unknown things uh, for me, but I get used to, and uh, I mean, it makes a lot of fun. We as a new team, we start from the scratch, so we are just working with the internal guys, so no external engineers. So we are really starting from the beginning on to, to get used to the car. It's still a learning process, but the guys doing great, so in general, I'm looking forward for the rest of the season and I'm seeing we're getting closer and closer. Operations on the car, overall. So braking pads are new, dist. It's the same. For me, it's, it's still uh, something, yeah, in a way to, to teach people, but to teach the guys to improve the car and um, yeah, hopefully to get the right input to, to be on the same pace like the, the other and the front runners. So we have to find five tens for sure in the second sector. I mean, here the main key is to be consistent as possible. Who better than Italian driver Emanuele Busnelli to take us round this legendary track here in Monza. We jumped on board with the driver of the number 46 Ebi Motors car. My name is Emanuele Busnelli, I'm the Porsche driver for the Motors, we are in Monza, this is the start. Six gears, we reach around 270 km per hour, we break at 120 meters from six gears to the first chicane, we get out. Second, third, fourth and fifth gear. and six gear to arrive to the second chicane that it's very bumpy the brake so we stay a little bit on the left side and then we turn on the right to brake then we turn left in second gear third gear fourth gear to get ready to the desmo one that is pretty tricky and one of the most difficult turn then fourth gear, we arrive to the second Lesmo, more easy. Third gear, fourth gear, here we go to the Serraglio, pretty bumpy also here. Yeah. We let the car moving on the right side of the circuit. We arrive to the Ascari, we break about 120 meters, third gear. Fourth gear about here. And then we go full throttle down. Also, this turn is probably the most difficult of the track. We arrive to Parabolica, 50 meters we break from sixth to third gear. And then fourth gear, and then we arrive to the end of the lap. moments the race is going to get underway here in Monza. In LMP3 Freddie Hunt took pole for Reitner Engineering car number 76 and in GT3 it was Emanuele Buzzanelli who took pole for Ebi Motors. Let's go racing.
The fifth race of the Michelin Le Mans Cup is about to get underway here at Monta. Freddie Hunt pacing the field in the writer engineering at Ligier. Manuel Busnelli on pole in GT3 in the Ebi Moses Porsche. Away we go. Freddie Hunt in the white writer engineering car with the inside line into the first chicane. He holds the lead from Jerome de Sadler in the MV2S Forestier racing machine. Everybody else just about squeezing through. Looks like it's pretty clean, even at the back with the GT cars as well. Sweeping around Curva Grande. Still two by two formation. Oh, and that is Rinaldi Racing. Steve Paro missing the chicane. Debris there. And a little local yellow. Marshall's very experienced at clearing up debris on lap one, turn one at Monta. Now, who's this? Oh, now this is Steve Paro again. Rinaldi Racing Car losing a right front fender. Not good news. There must have been contact. And that sent him through the chicane at turn one. They're going to have to retrieve that. And there's trouble for John Brownson, DKR Engineering number three machine, a very anti Ascari in the gravel trap. Did not handle that well. Safety car, deploy safety car, deploy. Well, Freddie Hunt will lead the field round. In the pits is Steve Paro. And that will have to make its way back to the team, you suspect, after the race. And this is DKR getting ready to receive John Brownson. Safety car in this lap. Safety car in this lap. Restarting in Monza with over 90 minutes. And Freddie Hunt late on the brakes, too late on the brakes. Cuts the chicane, gains an advantage over Jerome de Sadelaire. But de Sadelaire has got heat in the tyres. He's on the inside of Curva Grande. Maybe Hunt lifted off the throttle a little too much to give him the place back. Freddie Hunt still on the inside, but a change of lead. MV2S Forestier Racing lead, but more trouble behind. This is Andres Latour Cannon. United Auto Sports car stopped on the grass and another safety car. He's not alone. Stefan Rupp from Graf Racing was also involved there. Dear, oh dear. Safety car in this lap. Safety car in this lap. Clear up after our second incident at the first turn. Jerome de Sadler leading Freddie Hunt into turn one at the restart. Come on, everybody. Settle down a little. Get some heat into those tyres and into the brakes. No more trouble. One of the United cars spins around the Hegeli by T2 racing machine. That's pitted to curtains. Now, can he get going? Brake lights are on. Looks like he may still have an engine. He does and avoids the gravel trap. Well done. So he rejoins way down. Well, among the GT3 cars under the banking. Somebody is smoking. That's the Optimum Motorsport car. Mark Crader, car number 20 damage on that right front corner that's causing the tire rub that's where the smoke's coming from oh, that is really not looking very clever i'm sure he's going to head to the pits into the pits mark cradar and optimum are right by pit in so there they are ready for him right wing is there and there is trouble. That's DKR's Alexander Bukantsov. That's somebody going through the tyres there. That's Freddie Hunt. He's not alone. Looks like there is trouble. Has somebody dropped oil or fluid there in the braking area at turn one at the beginning of the chicane? So what happened to Bukantsov? What's happened? Oh, behind. He's come down the grass, has he? More trouble. John Schaumann, United Autosport. Full course yellow. Full course yellow. Jerome de Sadler leading narrowly from Freddie Hunt and oh, Shaman getting it a little bit wrong in the Parabolica, having to take avoiding action and just rolling a wheel back into the gravel and getting stuck. Five, four, three, two, one. Full course yellow removed. Full course yellow removed. Here's the lead battle. Jerome de Sadler for MV2S Forestier Racing and Freddie Hunt for Writer Engineering. Freddie not getting the drive there out of the first chicane. 
Hunt chasing hard, runs wide at Lesbos. Ooh, does he get onto terra firma? He does. That would have been a big wake up call. In GG3, our race leader is Christian Paulson for GMB Motorsport. And he was a winner on Saturday morning in Race to Le Mans. Frickadelli racing on the inside. Klaus Abelin locks up under braking at the Retifilio. Goes across the chicane, across the curves. Luckily, missed Rob Hodes in the Team Virage car that he was trying to pass. Battle for seventh coming down into the braking areas. Valentino Catalano and Christoph Cresp. Catalano deep under braking. Can he make the apex? Yes, he does. Good pass. So Catalano for RLR Motorsport now up to seventh. Christoph Cresp, team car of the leader. MV2S Forestier Racing, he's down in eighth. Replay here, trouble at the Roger. Stephen Patrick in the bullet racing. Aston Martin getting in a little hot and luckily avoiding contact, but into the gravel traps. The Astons are struggling with weight here this weekend. Not so the Hondas. Christian Paulson still leading. Battle here for eighth place. Christoph Cresp in the orange MV2S Forestier racing machine under pressure from Jack Wolf. And the racing spirit Le Mans car goes straight by. Now, that is a problem for Christoph Cresp. That is not driver error, is it? No, he has come to a dead halt. More trouble, and that's the bullet racing Aston in the gravel at the Lesmos. He's only just been rescued from the Roggia, and he runs out wide into the gravel. Three, two, one, full course yellow, full course yellow. Disaster for Stephen Patrick and the bullet racing Aston Martin. There is the team. That looks like he's just told them on the radio, I've gone off again. So full course yellow flags are out and that means that everybody will be crawling around at 80 kilometers an hour as they get underway with the recovery of that Aston Martin. Driver changes at the 88 Honda and it's going to be a busy pit lane as well. Everybody coming in. And for teams like GMB, they've got three cars that will come in. They've got to get the right tyres on the right car or they'll be disqualified. 44 comes in now. And this is the leader in GT3. And that means they've had to put 88 tyres on 88. 44 must get its tyres and not the tyres are intended for 55. So there is a lot of fast work going on on the pit lane and in the pit box. There is the bullet Aston finally in the pit lane. Stephen Patrick will hand over to Valentin Asseclo. And still more cars streaming into the pit lane. Three, two, one. Full course yellow is clear. Full course yellow is clear. Back to racing speeds and the battle for third place in GT3. Kasper Jensen in the 55 car versus Fabio Babini in the Ebi Motors Porsche. A stationary car that's in Rodriguez from Team Virage. That's why the United car backed out of passing these guys. They were vigorously waved yellows on the run down to the Parabolica. Now it looks as though the Porsche is going to try and make a move on the Honda and the United car trying to go around both of them. Three wide down into the braking area. The LMP3 car does not have much in the way of top speed. Look at that. He's absolutely stalled and the Honda will keep his nose in front. Young Max Lin in the number two United car not taking too many big risks this early in the stint and probably wisely so. Always a worry when you see a big truck on the racetrack but full course yellow means that everybody is doing just 80 kilometers an hour as the rescue vehicle comes down along the hedgerow that separates the track from the back of the paddock. And away again goes the Team Virage car before it needs rescuing. There's a bizarre state of affairs. He will head into the pit lane, I'm sure. 
happen. It's like when your car stops to the side of the motorway and then decides it will go again just as the rescue truck arrives. Meanwhile, more trouble. This is Jens Muller, GT3 leader. And this is at the Ascari chicane. Debris there was their contact. Well, he is firmly buried. Battle for the lead. Tom Dillman, Racing Spirit of Le Mans. It goes around the outside of Louis Rousset. Doesn't get there, comes back underneath him. Great move by Tom Dillman. Force Rousset to defend deep and takes the lead of the race. Inside the final half hour. Racing Spirit of Le Mans had a 1-2 result in Road to Le Mans. And there's more trouble. That's Pat Gopadi from India, the TS Corsa car, being craned away at the Roggia. Battle for second place. Here comes Fabio Babini in the Porsche down the inside of GMB's Kasper Jensen. That's a change for second. Last 10 minutes, battle for third place. Leonard Weiss ahead of Josh Skelton. Oh, and there's trouble. That's RLRM Sports. That is Simon Butler. Just backed Three, off into the gravel. Two, one. Full course yellow. Full course yellow. Five minutes to go. Full course yellow. Simon Butler is stranded. Rear wheels in the gravel. Can't go anywhere. He's going to need rescuing. Craned away. Two minutes on the clock. The battle for third place. Josh Skelton around the outside of Leonard Weiss. What a big move into the Roger. There's Alexander Matchell, the rest of the team at Racing Spirit of Le Mans. Oh, and Leonard Weiss is struggling here. Sharma Lacy squeezing through on the inside for that fourth place. Leonard Weiss out wide on the Lesmos. Recovers from the gravel, but that was a big moment for Leonard Weiss. He drops down to fifth. MV2S Forestier in second place between the two racing spirits of Le Mans cars, but Tom Dillman and Alexander Matchell, winners of the season opener in Le Castellet, first and third in the two races at Le Mans, will come home to victory here in Monza as well. What a season they are putting together. They claim the win here in Monza, their third of the year. In GT3, it's GMB's 88 car that wins. Lars Pedersen and Mikkel Pedersen claim victory. Confirmation of the result, 1-3 for Racing Spirit of Le Mans with MV2S Forestier Racing, who started second, finishing second. And in GT3, it's a 1-2 for GMB. 20th, the winners, 88. 55 in second and Bullet Racing's Aston Martin despite all their ups and downs finishing on the podium in third position. Another great result for Racing Spirit of Le Mans, Alexander Matchell and Tom Dillman. Yeah, third win, um, a, a bit tougher than the previous two. I, I had to, to overtake uh, two cars for the win, but yeah, the, the car was great, uh, good tire degradation. Alex gave me the car in good position again, and uh, we could win our third one. So uh, it's really good to go now into the two months break with a nice feeling. Jack Wolf and Josh Skelton finished third for Racing Spirit of Le Mans. Jérôme de Sadler, Louis Rousset in second for MV2S. Tom Dillman and Alexander Matchell's third win for Racing Spirit of Le Mans means that they extend their advantage. They've now got more points than the closest two cars combined. Meanwhile, our GT3 winners are the 88 crew. We were fighting a bit, trying some things, and uh, in the end, we, uh, we were quite strong and uh, we had good speed, so yeah, it was nice, a nice race for sure. Despite their woes, Stephen Patrick and Valentin Asaklo took third for Bullet. Christian Paulson and Kasper Jensen second for GMB, where Michael Pedersen and Lars Engelbrecht Pedersen claimed their first win of the season in the number 88 car, moving them up 20 points shy of their teammates who lead. Yet another adrenaline-filled race here in Monza for the Michelin Le Mans Cup. We'll be back in September in Spa, Belgium. So have a great summer and see you then.